Welcome to Luke 418 Radio. You're listening to The Dove. I am your host, Kenneth Ramsby. I would like to welcome each and every one of you. I hope your life is enhanced by the Word of God we share here on The Dove. Come with me as we receive inspiration to our hearts for life. Hello, my fellow Dove Show listeners. My friends, I would like to begin today's show by reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. And the word of God reads, And there shall come forth a rod of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. We're going to play a song today by Lynette Hester. It's one of my favorites. It is called Take Your Burdens to the Lord. Oh, this song is something else. That's what we all must do. Take our burdens to the Lord. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. 
Yeah, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Last week, we went over some of the views that Gregory Scott and Gene Whitehead had on five things that guys hate out of the 10 that we had selected. And they were taken from the Bible, of course. This week, we will continue with five more things that God hates. As mentioned last week, some of you may not know this, but God the Father is a person. Of course, not a person like us, a human person, but a person in the aspect that he has a personality. We will continue to take a deeper look at one of the personality characteristics that God has, which is hate. Yeah, I know many may think or say that God does not have this characteristic, but the Bible is pretty clear that God does have it and places it towards numerous things. The five of the list we shared last week of the 10 things that we selected that God hates were haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, and feet that make haste to run to evil. This week, we will discuss these five things that God hates. A false witness who breathes out lies, one that shows discord among brothers, divorce, religious hypocrisy, and those who love violence. The first one we're going to discuss is a false witness who breathes out lies. Now, this is more than the lies of a lying tongue. This represents someone who takes an oath and then intentionally spreads lies and misinformation. This is like the person who goes on the witness stand, you know, in the courtroom and takes an oath to tell the truth and says, so help me God, and then turns around and lies to the face of all who are there, including God, because you know we're there. This can also include those who misrepresent God. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Now, no, you can search the world over and you'll never find a sinless pastor. But be weary of Bible teachers and pastors who don't have accountability in their lives and who misrepresent the gospel in and out of the pulpit. Because, you know, none of us are without sin, not even those pastors that act like they're sinless. So let me ask you, how many times can a pastor of a church, oh, sorry, (laughs) how many times can a pastor of a church or leader or teacher sin in the commission of their duties they were gifted by God? Yeah, you have heard the reports of a male pastor sending naked pictures or having sex with teenage boys or girls of their congregation or the pastor who got caught three or four times committing adultery with three or four different women. All I can say about those who were doing these things while representing God is what the Bible says in James 3, 1 through 2. And it reads, not many of you should become teachers, self-constituted censors and reprovers of others. My brethren, for you know that we teachers will be judged by a higher standard and with greater severity than other people. Thus, we assume the greater accountability and the more condemnation. For we all often stumble and fall and offend in the many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things, he is fully developed character and a perfect man able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. You know, it is obvious that many become pastors and teachers and really should not. 
You know, just because you went to the Bible college and that looked good, you know, that does not mean that you should be head of a church. The reading of the word about not many should become teachers should tell us to be careful to who we listen to as well that is a teacher or a pastor. If your pastor or a teacher is one that never mentions any of the Ten Commandments in any of their sermons, you might want to find another church. Or if your pastor licks his lips every time you or a pretty woman or a handsome man walks by them, then you might want to find yourself another church. Or if your building fund has been going on for collections for over 10 years and nothing in the church has been repaired yet, then you might want to find out, like I just read in the news, a new admin person. There was an admin person that maybe be at your church who stole nearly $100,000 from a building fund, according to court papers. I don't know who church that was. It might have been yours. I don't know. And they admitted to stealing weekly building fund donation money from the church over the course of the 10 years. Now, you might want to find yourself a new church if that happened in your church. And it really did happen. She admitted to it. I'm like, all right, he did. Bottom line is, when you give your word, keep it true. And if you're working in the house of the Lord, no matter what it is, you're working for the Lord. You know, another thing that the Lord hates is one who sows discord among brothers. Or we can call them saboteurs. Those who I am sure you know who are ruiners, uprooters, wasters, destroyers, and undoers of good things. Those persons who destroy or ruin or lay waste to everything that they can. You know, these are especially the ones who are jealous of others. There are saboteurs all around us. You know them at work. Some may be a so-called friend or a member of your church or probably some even in your family. They are normally that one person who causes trouble for everybody all the time. The term that the Bible uses among brothers is the verse that leads me to settle that this is focused closer to the home. This is speaking to the person who always stirs up conflict or discord among relatives or within the fellowship of the church, always causing misery where the cultivation of a family should be. If you do not know anyone like this, then it's probably you. I say it probably. Now look, I know you've never caused discord in your family or within the church by ruining the family reunion, by pointing your fingers at the flamboyant gay nephew or butch niece or picking on your cousin's kids who never had a hair comb, saying things as loud as you can like, Janice, you need to do something with your kid's hair. And they need to take a bath. That three-year-old feet smells like a man's. Why you got to be so dirty? Dang, that is why no man wants you anyway in those th- all those six kids you got. I am sure you're not an uprooter, waster, destroyer, or undoer of good things. No, not you. So I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about me and people like me. People who in the past have made mistakes by causing disruptions at work or home or even at church and had to get down on our knees and not only ask God for forgiveness, but also ask those who we offended to forgive us for the way we acted during those times. Yeah. Now, 
If it is you, seek forgiveness and then stop. If it's someone you know, pray about how to address the issue and then address it along with asking the Lord to give you a new heart as the words from your mouth come from the heart. So says the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. You know, we have to be careful and mindful on how we approach people who do have these kinds of issues. The book of Matthew 15, verses 18 through 20 reads, but the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these make a man unclean for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with the unwashed hands does not make a man unclean. Sorry, we don't get to ignore things that God says he hates, and he hates strife and confusion within the family, whether it's in the church or among relatives. So let's not be part of the negative side of that and let us be that positive one that goes to the Lord and see how he wants us to handle fixing things within our church community or our family community. Now, divorce is the next subject I want to talk about. Now, in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 16, God says, For I hate divorce says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. Now, I will include with that verse what Matthew quoted Jesus as saying. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife except on the grounds of pornea or sexual immorality makes her an adulteress and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So those who have made a woman or man divorced, not because of sexual immoralities or have married a woman who has been divorced, have sinned before the Lord. What most will have to do is ask God to forgive them for their lack of knowledge in understanding his word and trusting in the law of man on divorce and not the word of God. We do perish as men and women for lack of knowledge on many things, just as the Israelites did. You know, the Israelites were told in the book of Isaiah 4, 6, which reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also eject, reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Let us be more attentive to the word of God, especially now. Since truth is at a premium in this world and is getting more scarce every single day. Oh, the truth is hiding from a lot of us, especially in the news. You turn on the news, you don't know what's true and what's not. You just can't tell. It is amazing how we all live this day and just untruths can come left and right out of nowhere all day long and then we find out what the truth is and all we can do is shake our head. It's like, are we living in reality or are we living in some kind of fantasy land right now? It's amazing to me. Let's talk about religious hypocrisy. And this what thing that Jesus had, <laughs> there was a problem that he had with them Pharisees, you see. Isaiah 1, 14 through 17 reads, Your new moons and your appointed feast my soul hateth. Now, this is God talking to the Israelites after they was out there just doing every and anything after he had gave them all that land filled with milk and honey. 
It also says they are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. God got tired of them out there doing what they wanted to do. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I won't hear you. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. You know, that's something that I think we all, not only God talking to the Israelites after they out there doing everything and anything, but that's something that we need to do. When we go out there, we're out there messing up, just doing whatever we want to do. And then God is so merciful. You see that? The mercy, he, he even told them, look, this is what you got to do. Stop doing all the bad stuff. Wash you, make you clean, put away all the evil. Cease and stop doing it. Don't just, you know, I ain't sinning. Uh, yeah, Lord, I ain't sinning in a week. You know, I, I haven't sinned in a week. So I, I'm good. And you go out there and sin again. And then, oh, yeah, I ain't sinned in a month. So I'm good. You know, you can't keep going out and sinning. You got to stop. You have to, like they say, grow up. Grow up in Christ. Grow up in the word of God so that you are clean when Jesus come. And you know, when Jesus come, you might be asleep. And I ain't talking about sleep in your bed. And when that happens and you sleep, not sleep in your bed, you best to be ready. You best to be ready when he comes. Because when, when he comes riding in with his army, we have to be ready. And the only way we can be ready is stop sinning right now while we are alive. Ask God to forgive us, give our hearts to Christ and start serving him and stop serving ourselves and man. We got to do it now. We can't be waiting around, hoping to dream. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm away. I heard this before. Yeah, I, I ain't going to believe this. I heard this before. I said, I asked a person, I said, you know what? You know, as you get older, you know, I found that, uh, you know, it's time, you know, we you have to grow up. You know, and just stop doing all the foolishness, you know, the getting high, drinking, chasing women, doing all those crazy things that we as men and human beings do and women. You know, we got to, you know, we just got to stop. And I decided, to make that decision and stop. I said, you need to too. You're older than me. Well, you know, it, you know, you really need to stop because sometimes you take it a little bit too far. And you know what I heard? I heard this person tell me, I don't want to stop. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to wait right until I get ready to die. Then I'm going to ask God to forgive me. I looked at him like, excuse me. <laughs> well, I'm like, oh, that's it. I'm like, all I can do is shake my head like, oh, you are so lost and so wrong. And, you know, this is the sad part. That person knew God, knew the Bible and knew exactly what he was saying. That's a scary thing. So all you can do for people like that is get down on your knees and pray for them. Do the constant prayer. Lord, touch them. Open up their ears. Let them hear you, Lord. Change their heart. Give them a new heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit within them. You know, it's a sad thing that you see a person headed to hell and they don't care. They love sin. The God, Jesus had it right. The, they, people love the darkness. They love the darkness. They love living in their sin. It's amazing. And it's a scary thing. And all we have to do is pray and pray and pray and keep on praying for those who are lost like that. So let's get on the, a little bit. I got off a little tangent there, right? <laughs> So let me get back on track. We're talking about religious hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, in Amos 5, 21 through 24, it also reads, God says, I hate, I despise your feast days and will not smell your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard your peace offerings of your fat breast. Take thou away from my noise 
and the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as mighty streams. So sometimes, you know, when we are out there acting like we don't know God and doing what we want to do. And then when we need something and we get on our knees and pray and you are praying and praying. And while you praying, you have this feeling like, is God hearing me? I don't think he, I don't think he listening or hearing me. And he might not be, because in this case he wasn't. You know, sometimes God don't listen to us. You know, he don't hear our prayers because we out there doing everything that we want to do and not what he says for us to do. And why would he listen? You know, you won't listen to your child who's who's out there acting up and acting a fool. And then they come asking you for everything in the world. Mama, take me get some ice cream. Oh, no. After you acted that way you did at school all week, getting suspended, almost getting expelled. And you want me to take you where? You know, God is a just God. And he's a father like a father should be to a child. You know, you can't expect to be out there messing up and then expect God to be blessing you while you out there sinning. You know, these things that God told Israel are the same that we got to adhere to today to ensure that we don't have any religious hypocrisy. The sad fact is that many things have not changed since the time of the Pharisees. Those who have had a pretense of having a virtuous character, moral or religious beliefs, or principles that one does not really possess. You know the types, I am sure. Those, not you, who run around every minute and say, bless the Lord, hallelujah, praise God, bless you, or rebuking everything from toast that is burnt to dried up fried chicken. And the next thing that comes out of their mouth is a curse word, being mad at the world for getting served bad food. Oh, yeah, you do know the type. No, not you. But those who in church on Sunday always have a testimony, right? And the testimony is right before a service lets out and lasts around 30 minutes and was the same testimony they told last Sunday. The same person who you saw looking suspicious going into the liquor store around the corner to pick up a nip and some lottery tickets because that number is getting ready to fall that they've been playing for all week. That will fall right after they don't play and stop playing that same number because that's what happens. As soon as they see the number come out that they missed, here they go. We're praying and asking God, talking about, Lord, you know I needed to hit that number as long as I've been playing it. <laughs> I tell you, we as humans are a trip. We want to do what we want to do and act like we holier than thou when doing it. But then when we ain't around us, sneaking around doing everything we should like God don't see us. <laughs> I tell you. God hates those who love violence and wicked people. We have seen that God hates idolatry, sexual immorality, injustice, hypocrisy, deceit, pride, and evil thoughts. The last thing we're going to look at is God hates for those who love violence and the wicked. In Psalms 11.5, the Bible reads, The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth the violence, has his soul he hateth. That's pretty deep. I'm going to read that again. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. God's soul hate them. That's deep. The Bible is pretty clear on that, it seems to me. Psalm 11.5 puts it bluntly as well. God hates wicked people. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. God hates their ways, their thoughts, their worship, their actions, and their evil deeds. 
So says Psalm 11.5, Proverbs 15.9, Proverbs 15.26, Proverbs 15.8, 6.18, and Psalm 5.5. 5. He hates their evil deeds. He singles out as a special object of his hatred, the blasphemous deeds of the Nicolaitans, those who seduce God's people with idolatry and sexual immorality. Yet this you have, you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate out of Revelation 2.6. It is clear that God hates the thoughts, deeds, and desires of evil people. But who are the wicked? Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're right. All of us. <laughs> We're all wicked. For uh, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. And Romans 5.12 says, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. We born like that. So why does God hate wicked people and harbor such wicked towards them? God hates the wicked because their wickedness is rebellion against him and his statue. God created us to be perfect and sinless. He wanted us to live in jubilant submission to him with the offering of him the pure worship that we can give him. But as we know, man rebelled and their treachery is displayed and acting contrary to God. God hates those who express their hatred towards him. We should be the same. David wrote in Psalm 139, 19 through 22, Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O blood of men, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Those that are wicked, God hates because their wickedness is displayed in harmful ways towards the people image that God created. I got to read this part again. It says, they speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. So, when you hear, because I know you don't say and use God's name in vain, you know that word, that two word God, and then there's another thing, another word right after that. You know, you don't say that, but you know that the people, as it says, hate God that use his name in vain. So I'm just saying, if you are one that have did that in the past, and have did it recently, you need to get down on your knees and pray to God to give you a clean heart. Because remember, what we talked about earlier and what I read, oh, everything that comes out your mouth comes from your heart. So if your heart ain't right, stuff going to come out your mouth that ain't right either. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, and if you have a problem with all or any of that, you know what you need to do. Talk to God about it. This is his word, not mine. <laughs> I'm just a messenger. Wicked people turn their fury against God's people. That's why he hates sinful people because they act out their wickedness against his people. So God is just, right? He is a just God. So we should not judge the wicked no matter what they do or say, God must judge the wicked for their rebellion. He must judge them for their evil thoughts, their evil deeds, and their evil desires. And he will, for God is a righteous judge and God who feels indignation every day. If a man does not repent, they will pay a hefty price to God for being who they are. 
In Psalm 145, it says the Lord preserve all who love them, but all the wicked he will destroy. And in Psalm 15, he promises the wicked will stand in judgment. The bottom line is, as those that are wicked will be judged by God, not by us. Because God says the Lord preserves all those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. So there you go. So let us always follow God's word and know the things he loves and the thing he hates and stay away, of course, from those things that God despises. God desires that we take a deeper look at all words he says and be trustful in his word. Those that do wicked, they will get theirs. In Psalm 1-5, it promises that and saying the wicked would not stand in the judgment. They ain't going to be there because they're going to be destroyed. God desires that we take a deeper look at every one of his words and because his words are convicting and sometimes even condemning. And that's what we need as human. We need to be convicted while we on this earth. And they are condemning because if you don't, if you die in sin, you will be condemned to an eternal life in hell. And I'm going to tell you, forever is a long time. That's all I got to say. That's way too long for me to be doing something stupid up here on earth while I'm on earth sinning after uh, I done, I've done found better, found a better white, a better life, a better way to live under God's word. It ain't that hard. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. So it ain't no problem. You know, once you figure out what you want to do with your life, if you want to be with him or not, that's the decision you have to make. God can't take it where you take it one step in his lane and then five steps out of his lane. He either wants you all the way in or all the way out. And you know what? One of the most blessings that you can ever receive and if someone hates you because you're a follower of Christ show your love for everybody no matter who it is going to restaurant paying for people's uh, bills going to restaurant leaving some you know some bible tracks you know on the desk like I do you know leave a little, little bitty bible some of them tracks you get you know and asking if you're a good person with a little cartoon on them yeah leave that all around if someone see you so nod and say bless you and then if they say give you that ugly look which you know I get sometimes uh, all I can say is praise the Lord <laughs> somebody hates me because I'm doing the right thing for Jesus <laughs> what you talking about you know we take God's word as is because we need to keep in mind that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness in order that a person of God may be content and equipped for every good work. Who so says 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. So let us all keep our focus on doing the will of God and not the will of our own and all that we do and think. Those were the last two weeks, 10 things that God hates. He has several others, but those were just 10 of them. I would love to thank and thank each and every one of you for listening to The Dove here on Luke418radio.com. I do hope that something has been said to lead you to make a decision to come to Christ today. Don't wait till tomorrow. It ain't promised. You know that. Join me again, my friends, as we listen and share the word of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you and your family. 
Until next time, this is your host, Kenneth Ramsby. May peace be with you. You've been listening to The Dove on Luke 418 Radio. Join us next week as we share God's word. Download the Luke 418 Radio app from your app store. Be sure to tune in daily to Luke418Radio.com. Be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media channel. 